Hey guys, how you doing? Johnny Guns here, and in this video I'm going to show you all the stuff I've done to my Annette A8 over the last month and 10 days. So hey guys, it's been a lot of fun here the last month. I can't believe I've actually done all this stuff and other things for friends. It's amazing once you have one of these, what you can do and what you think of and what you create on your own. So let's go over uh, upgrades on the machine. The first thing I gotta tell you, it's the last thing I did, but if you really wanna improve your prints quite a bit, get yourself a belt upgrade. I'll have all the links that I'm talking about here on the video in the description below, but get yourself a new belt, the softer stuff. The other stuff that came with it, it's not bad, don't get me wrong, but it's really stiff. It's hard to pinch down and it feels like you have to crank the crap out of it, you know, to get it to tension up. In my opinion, it just feels really rigid and I don't know, not, it's elastic, but you know what I mean. You can see here, this stuff here will just pinch right over and flatten right out. It's so pliable and it won't leave that dent like the other stuff or the uh, kink in it. See, I'm pinching this over and see it still folds back out. So get yourself a belt upgrade or a new belt and also print out these tensioners here. These are great. I, I can't tell you, it was so easy to get this tight. It is super tight, hasn't loosened up on me. The only thing also that I did is I grabbed some of this DuPont silicone for, uh, cause I was going through and making fidget spinners for everybody and I had to pick some of this up. Some of you will say this isn't good to use on the machine. I don't know to be honest with you, but I did use this on the rails and some other bearings and stuff in the machine and it's been working great. So I've been using this for like lubricating pieces and parts that you could use to lube up your machine like I have. Some people would mention there's, there's grease out there. You guys can correct me in the comments if you'd like. But yeah, get yourself the belt, get your tensioners printed while your belt's on the way. And also there's another addition underneath this bed. I'll have the link to that on Thingiverse where it holds the belt. And there's one on the back of here too, just better belt holders. And uh, those two, that will improve your prints so much. I can't even tell you. Now the reason why I did this here, it just looks cool. When I first saw that, I'm like, how the heck do you print that? So it was a learning experience. And also the upgrade is nice. You don't have anything floating in here. You have everything nicely tucked away. This thing does make a little noise. It makes little cracklies. You can almost hear it. If I wasn't talking, you could hear it and the mic was up closer to it. I had to upgrade to a Noctua uh, fan here because I was getting so sick of taking this off to change the filament. It's a bear. I'm not going to lie. It's a bear to get the new filament in there. It was almost like dreadful. It's like, oh, I just, I, I don't want to print too much, you know, because my filament's going to run out on this spool and then I'm going to have to change it. It's really not that bad, guys. I'm just a big baby. But uh, so what I did was I looked around and I saw that there's a magnetic mount for the fan. I don't want to hit this too hard but they're just four little magnets and this will clip back on. I love that so much and I got a Noctua fan. I'll have links to that as well. And the thing's great, it's silent if it wasn't for this. I, uh, I threw on an old uh, CPU fan on the power supply because I noticed it was getting warm. And this is a joke kind of. I took the magnets left over from all my projects and I have one of those bearings, you know, a pack of bearings for spinners and, and whatnot there, the skateboard bearings. That's just like a vibration meter to see how much it's vibrating just at a glance, and it's just from the magnets. It's, it's just me goofing around, that's not really an upgrade. This, I like the Z-axis homing area, how it used to be in the back. I love this little setup here where this is set up, you can adjust it here, and it's perfect. I, I did drill a little hole in there so the screwdriver fits nicely straight down. I can just leave it there for like a placeholder or if I need to adjust it, so that's pretty cool. Everything else, really, I just zip tied up on the left. I did a bunch of bracing prints, like front brace, rear brace, and these little ones here. The braces are from Leo underscore N. Love the work that they do. So I'm gonna do the Hulk brace in here once my orange filament comes back in and brace up the sides in the back here. So that's pretty much it. We did do a build tack. Uh, my good friend Gabe and I have been and inventing stuff. Well, he's been doing more, more in-depth inventing and I've been printing stuff out for him. He sends it over to me via Fusion 360 over Facebook Messenger, which is pretty sick. I, I like that. He was super nice to me. I printed out some, just a small bunch of stuff for him and he got me a, a BuildTac surface plate here. There's, I, I can't recall right now. I'll remember it as soon as I stop talking on the video here, but was it EID or IED? Uh, it's EID like surface stuff that you could use. I'm gonna try that in the future where you can get like plastic surfacing that is supposed to be better than uh, build tech or, or just these these hotbed uh, surfaces. I gotta say, it's so much nicer. The reason why I really like this uh, surface here, the build tech, is because you know how uh, you guys that have been printing for a while and you still use blue tape, which is still good. Uh, it, it works really well. The difference is when you pull stuff off here, it's really easy. You get yourself like one of these cheap little five bucks or two buck things off Amazon that just go around the corners and stuff. And then you can just pop it right off and there's no blue tape residue. That was one thing that was kind of annoying 
for some prints that were a little intricate, you'd have to spend time with a toothbrush and soap to get some of the tape off. At least that's what I did. There's probably easier ways of getting it off. But that's pretty much it, guys, what I've been up to the last month. The majority of stuff is designs for my good friend Gabe. We've been upgrading the printer, as you can see here. The one thing I want to go over, too, I'm using Repetier, the newest one, the one you donate and you get a newer Repetier program. But that's what I've been using, and it comes with, like, Cura Engine and Slicer or SLIC3R. I don't know. I've been getting used to that still. Still have a, a ways to go, but I, I prefer Slicer for certain things and then Cura for other things. <laughs> it's interesting. Still learning. Still learning. So that's pretty much all the upgrades, guys. So nothing too extravagant, but just to upgrades and whatnot here. It's pretty cool. What I'm using this printer for the next couple weeks or the, in the next month is some drone stuff. And I'm actually printing Tech2C's Peon 230 quadcopter. So that's what I'm doing right now. The uh, base and the top. Then we're going to do the arms and all that. And we're ordering up the stuff here in a couple days. The, the internals for that. So we'll, we'll have some of that in the near future. That's mainly what I'm kind of using the printer for is for uh, aviation stuff. I was like, gosh, I, I you know, why uh, spend $500 on like a DJI Spark when I can actually spend like, you know, a fifth of that printing my own stuff and just learning how to do it. That's what I wanted to do in the last year or so is actually build my own RC stuff. Aviation stuff like RC drones, gliders. Speaking of gliders, I made one the other day with that 3D Mars fluorescent green filament. It looks awesome. You won't have any problem finding this. This is really eye popping. The reason why I'm actually, I started looking around for frames that are 3D printed is because it actually costs a lot for the carbon fiber frames that you can get offline and stuff like that. So I'm like, you know what? Just do it yourself like I always like doing. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, guys, thanks for catching this little update on the machine. More to come with that, but that's pretty much it. Just aesthetics. This here, once again, the belt upgrade and these tensioners were a huge, like that was a huge improvement on the, the actual resolution and everything like that. It just looks so good now. Before I was getting kind of sloppy prints and things like that. And then right before I changed the belt and did all the tensioning upgrades, Things were starting to look a little a little messed up. That's why you're wondering why there's a black piece of duct tape right here because this whole top of the print is screwed up a little bit. And that's because it was just the machine was not accurate. Uh, it was not as accurate as it could be. Once I did all the, those upgrades, it's beautiful. So we'll do another video in another couple months or another month and show you what we've been up to. Once again, the only thing that was really annoying that was nice was the um, magnet mount fan upgrade so you can look at your filament and change it with these that's nice and uh, other than that it's been great uh once i did the belt upgrade two days ago it's been fantastic all right guys that's enough of me blabbing thanks for catching the video and we'll talk to you guys later with more videos on 3d printing and you know gl uh, gliders rc drones all kinds of fun stuff all right guys you take care we'll see you